Good morning, class. Uh, today we are in uh, Mark chapter 10, and um, we're only going to cover, cover a couple of verses today. We're going to, and, and Mark, maybe this is what you need to know. I don't know. Um, but uh, we're going to go from verse 32 all the way down through verse 34. Okay, and then whoever's teaching next week might be you. I'm not sure. Maybe it's me. But um, we'll pick up there. Okay? Um, so let's pray and then we can start. Uh, Lord, we, uh, we do thank you for the scripture. And, and even in today's uh, lesson, we, we, we really hit on the value and the importance and the, uh, of scripture. And uh, we thank you for that, that you have given it to us. Uh, we thank you for Jesus who, who paid the price. And uh, uh, just last Sunday, we, we celebrated that, uh, the price he paid and, and the, uh, his stamp of victory on that through the, re through the resurrection. And, and uh, Lord, we, we, we praise you for that and we thank you. And, and we just ask that today as we go through this lesson that you would give me the the proper words to say that would would rightly divide this passage and 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 uh, and teach us all. Um, I just thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. So, so today we're in Mark 10, uh, verses 32 through 34. It's not it's not a long passage, all right. And I thought, oh, maybe I could push on through to to the next passage, but I thought, you know, I'm I'm gonna. I, what am I in a hurry on this? I mean, seriously, let's let's take our time. Let's look at it and 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 pick up one or two things maybe on, on this passage. So so let me read it to you. Um, and it says in verse 32 and this is in, in my Bible, it says Jesus again predicts his death. It's a and, and I think it's appropriate considering we, we just celebrated Easter and bang, we've, we've got this. This is really uh, good. It's really timely. And it says, and they were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way. And the disciples were astonished while those uh, who followed were afraid. Again, he took uh, the 12 aside and he told them what was going to happen to him. He says, we are going up to Jerusalem, he said. And the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priest and the teachers of the law. And they will condemn him to death and will hand him over. <clears throat> and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And three days later, he will rise again. And he's pretty specific here about what's going to happen. Um, and so, uh, um, you know, and I, as we look at this, I think, I think it, would be, it would be good for us to also look at, the, uh, at, at some of the other passages in, in, uh, in the Gospels on this. So, so let's do that. And, and let's turn to Matthew, just, and just to compare, okay, uh, Matthew 20, verse 17. Okay, and let's just flip over there. Matthew 20. Verse 17. And it's, it's um, very similar. Um, but it says, And now Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, and he took the twelve disciples aside, and he said to them. Now, he doesn't mention the others here. Okay, and we're going up to Jerusalem uh, and the son of man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death. They will turn him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. Now he mentions crucified. Mark does not. Just says we'll be put to death. So here he even, he even details the type of death that he's going to have. Uh, and on the third day, he will be raised to life. Now, um, 
And, and Luke, if we go over to Luke, Luke brings up something that's, um, he brings another little piece to this that I think is interesting. And this is Luke 18, 31. Okay, it's kind of nice to do this sometimes to look and, and see what the, what the other gospels say. You know, somebody says, well, you know, the, the Bible contradicts itself. Well, it doesn't, but, but one author may give, the Holy Spirit may give him more insight uh, or, or prompting to tell a different thing. So here in, in Matthew 18, 31, it says, Jesus took the 12 aside and told them, we are going up to Jerusalem and every, okay, and now this is the additional part here in Luke that I think is, is important. And we're gonna, we're gonna tap the symbol on this. And he says, uh, and everything that was written, he says he was going, uh, he told, he, let me start from the beginning. Jesus took the 12 aside and told them, we are going up to Jerusalem and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. Hmm. That, that kind of brings us back to, uh, you know, the two that he met along the road to Emmaus, right? And haven't you, when you hear that the, uh, and, and are listening or reading in your Bible about the discussion of, of the two disciples that he meets on the road, and, and don't you say to yourself, gosh, I wish I could have been there to hear that one. Isn't that true? Haven't you said that to yourself? I, I've said, oh man, I wish I could have just heard what he said. And, um, and uh, but he says here, he says, uh, uh, that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. So he, t Jesus tells them all these same things. You go, oh, it didn't happen just once on the road. It happened right here. Um, and uh, it says, and, and he will be handed over to the Gentiles and they will mock him, they will insult him, they will spit on him, they will flog him they, and kill him, and on the third day he will rise again. Now, interesting here, interesting, in every one of these passages, it says, he will rise again on the third day. I mean, um, it's, it's pretty clear. And, um, and as I'm going through this, I realize, okay, um, this, just in, in Mark's gospel, this isn't the first time that Jesus predicts his death. All right, so, uh, and I'm laying some foundation here, some, some groundwork, because I wanna make another point. But consider this, that uh, in Mark's gospel, okay, that he has mentioned that and told the disciples that he is going to die, he's gonna be sacrificed, okay, for their sins, okay? He predicts his death, he does, and just look in Mark, okay? And you might wanna check these off in your Bible, but he does it three times. He does it in Mark 8.31, that's the first time. He does it in Mark 9.31, and now he does it again in Mark 10, 32. Hmm. You go, wow, that's three. You know, we've heard, haven't we heard, in the, when it says in the Bible, if, 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 if something is repeated once, it's pretty important, right? If it's repeated three times, it's, I would say it's really important. But if it's repeated 10 times, so I've got it repeated three times in Mark and three times in Matthew and three times in Luke. And then John has almost a whole chapter on it. Uh, and and uh, I think it's in, in John 12, okay? So you go, hold it. This is 10 times Jesus <laughs> predicts his death. And... Uh, um, that is, uh, you go, wow, I guess, I guess this is sort of important. Um, you know, it wasn't just once or twice. And, um, and here's the reason why I think we should, we should make a note in our Bibles. We should check this off 10 times he predicts his death. And, uh, and, and 
The reason is this, think about this, the skeptics, okay, and I'm not talking just the skeptics from the first century, but modern day uh, scholars of first century history, right, who are not believers, whose eyes have not been opened, okay, um, they, would, they would say, well, yes, we, we believe that there was a Jesus. There was a, there was a Jesus. We, we've got it. Even the, the secular writers of that time write about him. We, we believe that. And we believe that he was a, a teacher, okay? But uh, he was, he had some bad luck. And as a matter of fact, he overstepped his bounds. He got, they would tell you, and they would have you believe that he got caught up in the, the euphoria of his teaching and that, and that he got swept up into Jerusalem for the Passover, right? I mean, the, remember, you remember this, and you could see where this is coming from. Remember after the feeding of the 5,000, then we have the feeding of the 4,000, right? And then they were looking for more food, and they wanted to make him king. This was a pretty good program, right? Uh, this is the best welfare program they had come up with. And they thought, well, we will put this guy in office uh, because we can solve the, 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 the food shortage here. Um, maybe we don't even have to work. And so they were going to do what? They were going to make him king. Is that right? And, and uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, Jesus escaped from that, right? Uh, and so this whole concept that the skeptics bring forward, that he got swept up in the excitement of his prestige and his notoriety and they just cajoled him on up into Jerusalem to uh, to put down the the the, Greek, the the Gentiles and the Roman government and the and the Jewish priests and uh, it's not so it's not so but they would have you believe that and, and look at the passage here. Let's look here, and, and I'm going to go back to Mark. But look at the words that I think are, are really important here. And he says uh, in, in verse 32, and they were on their way up to Jerusalem. Up to Jerusalem, by the way, they were coming from the Dead Sea area, a thousand feet below sea level, and the Jebusite city that Jerusalem was built on was 2,500 feet above sea level. So that's a 3,500. I mean, not only uh, was it inconvenient to get there, I mean, he's not getting swept up this hill, okay? But look what it says. It says, it says, uh, on the way up, to, and with Jesus leading the way. He was, le he wasn't swept up. These disciples, as a matter of fact, it was just the opposite they were not overly excited about going to Jerusalem. Do you recall this? That, that uh, they, they were not, and it says here, it says, and, and one of the things you, you can read right here in this passage, it says, uh, and the disciples were astonished. They were astonished that he was going to Jerusalem, okay? And, and, and furthermore, it says, and while those who followed, there was another group. So there was the disciples, right? And then there was this other group. It wasn't just the 12. There were many. I mean, how many people on Palm Sunday were, were laying, you know, coming in, into Jerusalem? It, it was a crowd, okay? And Jesus always had crowds. Um, and the others, it says, um, and I'm going to find it here. Um, and the and those and while those who followed were what? What were they? Afraid. afraid. They were afraid. I wonder. Um, let me just throw this out to you. Why were they afraid? Why were they afraid? Mike. So, so what Mike is saying, and maybe you can't hear in the mic here, I'm going to repeat it for those who are listening online, but, but 
Mike was saying he has had confrontations with the chief priests and the elders in the Sanhedrin in the past, right? Those, those get-togethers were not always friendly. Am I... By, by, yes, by, by this itinerant preacher, right? Yeah, I, I'm with you. Uh, and so they were, they were jealous of his uh, uh, of following, right? And, and so the get-togethers with the, with the Pharisees and the scribes and the, was, was never a, was n- it never turned out good for them, right? And, uh, and we know, and, and for example, let's go, let's go someplace um, and... Um, Go with me to John chapter 11 and, and check this out. I'm gonna, let's, and this is about why the others were fearful. Go to John, Seth. You got to have your Bible, right? Because I could be making this up, okay? And you, you know that I do that, right? Yeah, I do. I make stuff up sometimes. So John chapter 11. No, no, just the Gospel of John, okay? Chapter 11, right? Is that, okay. And now, now notice here in John chapter 11, I'm, I'm in verse 16, okay? And I'm going to tell you what, in this light, I have, I'm having a little bit of trouble uh, reading here, but I'm going to find it here. Uh, verse 16, it says, uh, uh, and this was, this was about Lazarus, okay? And uh, I hope I'm in the right passage here. John 16, uh, Huh? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, and so um, you know, Lazarus is dead. I'm I'm starting in verse 14. Uh, And for your sake, I was glad I was not there, so that you may believe. uh, But let us go to him. Now, where he was was very close to Jerusalem. Okay, it was only a few miles from the city, Uh, and. then Thomas, now check this out, then Thomas, uh, called Didymus, uh, says to the rest of the disciples, let us go also that we may die with him. In other words, he knew very well what going to Jerusalem was going to end up like. I mean, uh, he didn't have, you know, uh, any uh, omniscience. He just knew from, from what, as Mike had said, that the conflict with with the leaders in the past this was this wasn't simmering down this was starting to escalate and why walk back in to their headquarters to 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 their camp uh and as a matter of fact jesus remember we we had talked about in the past that he would teach his disciples along the road and he took the long way around uh, to come back down south uh because the Pharisees, it was, it was less populated with, with uh, the chief priests and the scribes. He would be in less conflict with them. Uh, and they were always searching him out to test him, to question him, right? Uh, but now he's heading straight to the camp and he's leading the parade. So, so you know, the skeptics that are, that are telling us, oh no, this was just bad timing on Jesus' part. He got caught off guard. Uh, no, he didn't. Ten times, ten times he predicted that this must happen to fulfill the scriptures. Um, so this wasn't an accident. This was planned from the beginning. And remember, uh, when Peter first discovered this, he said, Oh, no, Lord, that is not a good plan. We're not going to do that. And, and, and Peter had to come around to the fact that Jesus was not going to be dissuaded from fulfilling the prophecy, and and um, and remember, even John at the baptism, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, he said, "Behold, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world." He knew this had to be. This was the perfect sacrifice. Um, and consider, as we go on, okay, um, and and uh, that that this was was a very fearful thing for the apostles. And, um, 
and I think in, in one of MacArthur's sermons on this, he said, he said, can you imagine what would have happened to the disciples had Jesus not told them beforehand what was going to happen? You know, if this just happened and they had no, he hadn't been preparing them over and over again. We know he prepared them three times. Uh, what would have happened up upon his death? Um, with no preparation. Um, I thought, you know, that's an interesting, uh, an interesting take on this. Like, um, Jesus was, was uh, deliberate, okay, about preparing his disciples for the job they had to do, right? Um, another thing that I think is interesting to, to just pause and think about a second. You know the, the passage where it says, um, and Jesus was a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. Do you know? I, and I don't have the reference here, but, but um, I'm, Seth, I'm not making that one up. Okay. Cindy Holbrook nodded when I said that. She knew that there really is a passage like that. Okay. Um, but, you know, I've often, I've often struggled with that because, you know, um, yes, it was, it was pretty intense, you know, come, uh, you know, after Palm Sunday, after entering Jer Jerusalem, that was pretty intense. But, but a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, I, I was just trying to, to, to figure out, okay, what is, the, what is the real meaning of that, that verse? And consider this for a second. If the Lord is omniscient and he knows very well the sufferings that are going to happen from, from the beginning, he has to deal with this coming uh, punishment, right? That he's going to bear the sin for, for his whole life. You go, I mean, it's, it's really a blessing that we don't know the future, isn't it? Consider that for a second. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that I don't know, you know, the future. And, but the Lord did, okay? And, and I thought, wow, you know, just considering this one thing, the, 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 the scourging and the abuse and the mocking and the, the whole trial in Calvary scene, um, how that could have weighed on you over the years, knowing exactly what's going to happen. And, and you know, we, just last week we celebrated the, the, the resurrection. But, but consider some of these things that, that Jesus predicts here. I'm, I'm back to Mark, okay? And, uh, uh, and he says he's going to be betrayed. I don't know if you've ever been betrayed, but, you know, uh, from one of your own, one of your inner circle, he predicts his, that Judas is going to do this. He knows it before Judas does, okay? Um, and he's going to be betrayed to exactly whom? To the chief priests and to the, to the scribes. And, and uh, uh, this isn't just a few bad priests, by the way. This is the whole, you know, there, we can only think of one or two that didn't play. Nicodemus is one, right? But this was the, the chief priest and... Uh, the prior chief priests, it's kind of like uh, uh, they retain that title like you retain the title of president. Once you're the president of the United States, you don't lay that title down. So you have the chief priest, but then you have the, the prior chief priests. They were all in on it, a along with the Pharisees. I mean, we could say, uh, was Paul a Pharisee of Pharisees? He was sort of uh, persecuting the church, right? And, and then you've got the scribes who were the theologians. They, it was the whole group were, were condemning Jesus, okay? And, uh, and then, um, and they will condemn him to death, <clears throat> and they will turn him over to the Gentiles, and they will mock him. Well, we know that that happened, okay? Um, and he will be scourged. You know, they, they talk about the scourging, you know, and, and uh, but... Um, this was, a, this was a terrible thing. And it was so, you know, they had, they had whips that they would do this before, but the Romans, the Romans 
dialed it up a little bit, right? And, and they would put pieces of glass or bone at the, in the ends of the whips. And the scourging was so physical that, um, that it took two men to do it. Um, you think, my gosh. And the Lord knew all this, and he had to bear it his whole life. You think, this is a man acquainted with grief, right? Uh, and, uh, but, but consider this for a second. And, and, uh, and, and I'm going to move on to, to um, Luke's, go- I think it's Luke's gospel where it talks about Jesus told them all that would happen to him from the scriptures, just like the two from Emmaus, right? On the road to Emmaus. And consider this, the scribes and the Pharisees should have known this. And, and you know, Jesus continually corrects them. And, he, you know, when he comes into conflict with them, doesn't he say, haven't you read don't you know? You know, hasn't, doesn't he say that to them all the time? He, he takes them right back. Don't you know your own scripture? And, uh, and uh, you know, what they were masters at was flipping the scripture and twisting it to, to uh, uh, keep their own position, right? And to, and to uh, you know, and, and we saw that on how they dealt with divorce. Remember a few, uh, a few weeks ago we talked about that, how they, how they just manipulated the scripture to, to get where they wanted to be. And, and so um, they should have understood from the beginning that, uh, you know, di- didn't they have a sacrificial system that was ongoing, right? I mean, this was, that's what they were selling in the, in the temple when Jesus came back with the lambs and, and they were changing the money, right? Uh, this sacrificial system, they should have known that, that there needed to be a sacrifice to take away sin so that they could be presentable to God, right? Well, we know from the Jewish system that, that the, the curtain to the Holy of Holies to enter to... to to be in the presence of God was not open to all. It was so restricted, restricted, right? And even the chief priest who went in did it with trepidation. Agreed? And he was in and out of there as quickly as he could be, okay, once a year. Okay, this was not, um, um, this whole sacrificial system was to get your attention that you have not, have not, Uh, abided by, completed, fulfilled the law. And so they needed to continually sacrifice lambs and goats and bulls, right? We even heard that in Mark's sermon today, I think, right? Didn't he? I think he he mentioned that. But um, so we realized that there needed to be a perfect sacrifice and they they were looking forward to this. and, and, And we should know even from the discussion with Abraham, remember he took Isaac up to the mountain? And that was a, a whole uh, uh, example of, of a sacrifice. But, but what we discovered there, that the Lord will provide his own sacrifice. Isn't that amazing that the Lord will provide? And, and here, here it is fulfilled, right? And, uh, but, but if you look, and I'm just going to tick off a few things. And this is what maybe, and I'm just thinking, wouldn't it have been great? I, I, I led off with, wouldn't it have been great? to be with those two disciples on the road to Emmaus and hear Jesus open up the Old Testament that talks about himself, right? Well, I'm thinking to myself as I'm, I'm preparing this, I'm thinking, well, I didn't get left out. It's all right. This is, I have the Old Testament. I just have to do some of the homework to find those passages, but they're, they're not hidden. They're right here. And it's possible that some of the passages that Jesus opened up to his disciples, okay, to fortify them after his death were these, you know, for example, and, and you might want to write these down, but um, Zechariah 13, 7, okay, and it's about the, sh- the sword against the shepherd, okay, uh, uh, against a man who is close to me, okay, uh, and he strikes the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered, Zechariah, 13, 7. And then Zechariah is full of a number of prophecies, but I'll just give you a couple others. 11, Zechariah 11, 12. Okay. Um, 
that's about the 30 pieces of silver. Are you serious? He calls, they call it out beforehand. Um, how about Zechariah 12.10? Um, they look upon the one they have pierced. Okay, maybe Jesus took them there. Maybe um, Jesus took them to Numbers 21, uh, 8, about the serpent being lifted up, right? And you look on the serpent, um, and if you don't understand that one, you know, talk to your folks on that, okay? But, but that sim- symbolizes Jesus being lifted up on the cross. And in and, and Psalm 34, um, it, it, it uh, uh, prophesies that not any of his bones will be broken. Um, and in Psalm 69, 21, that he'll be giving, given vinegar to drink, right? But um, there's a couple that are so strong that, you know, and I, I'm giving you some, some, maybe some minor ones here to, to, to look at, but, um, you know, Psalm 22, we can't, we cannot not go to Psalm 22. And, uh, you know, if you will look at your Gospels as you go through the Gospels, you'll realize that it just, it doesn't go into any detail in the Gospels about the crucifixion. It just says, and he was crucified. You think, well, really? That's all they say? Uh, in the go- it doesn't give us any details in the Gospel about the crucifixion. Where you get the details is in Psalm 22. Now, let me just say, was Psalm 22 written before? Before. How, how much? Can you throw me a number? How many years before was Psalm 22 written? How many? Yeah, 700 to 1,000. I mean, so I'm thinking 700, around 700. Look at, and let's just go to Psalm 22 just for drill and and tell me if this doesn't sound uh, like uh, prophecy to you. And, uh, and then you wonder, how did the Jews miss this? How did they miss it? Um, and uh, Psalm 22, you know, Psalm 23 gets a lot of, a lot of views, but Psalm 22, my goodness. Uh, and, uh, you know, it starts right out with, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Okay. And, and then uh, verse six or, or verse seven, all who see me mock me. Was, did we just talk about mocking? Okay. Uh, and they hurl insults and they shake their heads. We know this happened. Right. Uh, and he trusts the Lord. Really? And let the Lord rescue him. Is that exactly what the chief priests and, or the, the priest said and the Pharisees said at his crucifixion, uh, let him deliver him since he delights in him. Wow. 700 years before, word for word. Uh, and, uh, um, and so we could go on here. There, there is a number of passages. Uh, and a band of men has encircled him. They have pierced, how about this in verse 16? They have pierced my hands and my feet. Psalm 22 gives you the details of the crucifixion 700 years before. I think maybe the Lord takes them to these places and and then he probably takes them to to Isaiah 53. Okay, and again, Isaiah 53, it's not a long chapter, but I I refer to you today as your homework to go home and read Isaiah 53. uh, And you'll go, my gosh, this was written again. This was... Uh, you know, at least 700 years before the birth of Christ. And, uh, and so, um, and so we've got verse 33 here. I'm back to Mark. And, um, and I'm going to tell you this, that, that, you know, how can Jesus know and predict to his disciples, okay, that, that he is going to die and, and be in all these details. How, how does he know that? that? And any comments on that? How, and I've given you some, one reason how he could know, right? One reason is that he knows his Old Testament, okay? He knows it better than the scribes and the Pharisees. That's one reason. But he also knows it 
from his omniscience since he's God? And can you think of, and this is a question for the group, can you think of some times, you know, to, just to verify the omniscience of the Lord? Can, can you think of some things that he calls out in advance that just blows people away? What's that? Besides this yeah, besides this passage. Yeah, names the cult, right? And then he, he tells them what is the conversation is going to be, and he gives them the answer, right? He says, the master needs it. We will return it, right? What else? Can you think of something else where, where he just calls it out, Anything else? The woman at the well. One of my favorite Bible characters, right? The woman at the well. And he, he gives her whole marriage litany. She's, she's blown away, right? What else? Can you think of something else? How about um, when, um, when he's calling the disciples? You remember, you remember the, the situation? Uh, and uh, does he call, was it Nathaniel that he calls out, right? Uh, and Nathaniel calls him out as, as Lord and God, the Son of God, right there. And he says, you, You're calling me out just because I saw you under the tree, right? Okay, and then, you know, and I'm not sure, you know. It's like Jesus always catches the disciples talking about themselves, right? Uh, you know, I'm not sure he was within earshot, where they, but he just knew what they were talking about. And he calls them out. What were, you, what were you arguing about on the road while I was, you know, while we were walking? Um, it, that could be. That could be another. But, but the point is, is that the Lord knew these things, and he knew his Old Testament, and he was omniscient. He knew the sufferings that were going to happen before they happened. What a terrible uh, weight to bear your whole life, you know, to know this. Um, and, uh, and so um, he tells them in detail about what's going to happen. And it's interesting, uh, you know, only one person can know the future. I mean, I, he puts Jesus in a group of one. Just this, just this one characteristic. He, he's not. He's no longer a man. We can't do that, you know. Um, and uh, and so <clears throat> it's it's uh, it's interesting too. And and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the very end of the passage here about him rising again. Right? He says it in all three gospels that he's going to rise again. Or in all, yeah, in all three. And, uh, uh, but the disciples, they, yeah, I think it's in Luke's gospel, says they really didn't, they didn't understand what he was saying at the time. They just weren't getting it, okay? But I'm, 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 I'm flipping back and forth. Go to Luke 24 with me for a second. And um, in Luke 24, In uh, verse 6, and uh, this is the angel at the tomb, okay? And uh, it says uh, in, in verse 6, it says, uh, He's not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be delivered, okay, into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Remember he told you this was going to happen? Okay. And, uh, and, so, um, and so they remembered and uh, then. And... Uh, And then, and then something else. I, I'm, I'm just thinking, the disciples were not, were not getting it, but um, do you recall that uh, the chief priests and the Pharisees, uh, they remembered that he said he would do this. Remember the, the conversation 
about after the crucifixion. I think it's in John's Gospel. Um, I don't know if I wrote it down. But in John's Gospel, uh, it talks about um, they were going to bury Jesus and, the, and the, 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 the priests and the Pharisees come uh, to Pilate and they say, you know, he said, he said he was going to rise again on the third day. Um, and if this happens, it'll be worse than everything that's already happened. Um, can you please put a guard? Can you seal the tomb? First off, we have to seal the tomb. And then we need to put a guard there because we can't have their disciples sneaking in, taking the body, and making this even worse. If he rises from the dead, or, this is all, you know, the gig is up. Okay, it's exactly what he said, right? And so yeah, I'm thinking to myself, hold it. How did they know? They even knew that he said that, okay? Um, and uh, they understood it. It wasn't like I'm gonna, this temple, we're gonna, I'm gonna destroy this temple and on three days I'll, I'll build again. No, he was, he was more specific. They knew he was talking about the temple of his body. And as a result, they wanted a guard on that tomb. Amen? So, I mean, uh, Jesus predicts uh, the, his, uh, those who condemned him heard it and they were gonna guard against that, okay? Um, a lot of good that did, by the way. Um, you know, like, like putting Peter in jail, right? I mean, the Lord wills. <laughs> He's not going to stay in jail. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> um, so anyway, I just, I just thought we should take this passage, just those verses, and on the, on the Sunday after Easter, kind of go back and review um, you know, Jesus, this, this wasn't a, a bad accident. This was planned, and he led, he led them into, into Jerusalem for this specific purpose. So let's pray. Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you that you have given us the scriptures that even though we weren't on the road to Emmaus, and even though we weren't with the 12, uh, as Jesus opened up the Old Testament about himself, uh, we have the Old Testament, and we can search those scriptures ourselves, and, and uh, we can find uh, Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53 and verses in Zechariah. And uh, Lord, we thank you for that, that um, before it happened, you told us, and that gives us strength to stand firm uh, going forward, even though we know uh, we will be persecuted in the same way for standing for the truth. And we just ask for strength when that time comes. And, and uh, we thank you for the scriptures and we thank you for the Lord Jesus. Uh, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.